What's going on everybody? Ali and Adam in the house early in the morning. Just drank a whole lot of water. Gonna go on a nice shirtless run later today. Coming to you guys with a video about the behind the scenes of my Migos t-shirt remix. So I got this comment a couple months ago and uh, I've been getting around to doing this video. So I'm gonna show you the breakdown, show you how I processed my drums, vocals, bass, and kind of the idea behind the whole process. So let's just jump right into it. So this project is um, is not too huge. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, but there were a lot of breakthroughs and great ideas that came uh, along the process. Let's uh, solo for you guys just the drums so you can hear the drums. The kick is pretty bass heavy, and I'm gonna explain what's going on with the clap. So not much going on with the kick. There's a passive EQ, which I find adds a lot of nice uh, tube warmth and can really brighten your individual tracks really nicely. You can use it on vocals, drums. I tend to use it on drums. I also like using it on the master. It really depends, but it is a mixing and mastering EQ. And of course, good old sound -gadizer. So if you guys watch the uh, previous video, you'll see how I used sound -gadizer in Qui-Gon Jinn. Sound -gadizer is not to be messed around with. It's a good tool if used properly. And just like Jay Hardway, you know, a lot of times I get lazy and I want to get quick, immediate pumping results. You know, look no further than your boy Soundgodizer. In the passive EQ, I wasn't doing any high passing. I just high passed the side, which affected the reverb of the kick a bit. Now, let's look at the clap. So I'm gonna turn off the effects for the clap so you can hear it just dry. So you can see we're really brightening it. Uh, we have the equality, which is adding some high shelf. We're high passing it to make space because that kick is very heavy. We have the good old supercharger, one of my favorite compression plugins. We're really going harsh on this one, but I'm using the punch so that the uh, attack is not immediate. It doesn't squish the transients. Sometimes I like the slam preset on vocals. I use slam a lot, but punch is also good if you want to retain more of the dynamics. Of course, we have the saturation and the brightness going on, the different modes. I do have a video on satur on uh, Supercharger, so uh, check out the in the video description. I'll link you uh, regarding Supercharger if you want to see a video regarding that. Good old Passive EQ Sound Godizer again. Uh, Valhalla Uber Mod. Valhalla Uber Mod is a chorus and a reverb powerhouse. So it does a variety of things to widen. So whether it be drums, whether it be vocals. And uh, I've used it a lot on vocals in the past. So Valhalla Uber Mod is great if you want to try out something different for chorus effects. Last but not least, we have the Valhalla Vintage Verb. I just wanted a basic plate verb. The clap already had a bit of wetness, but not enough to my liking. So let's hear it without the Valhalla. And now with. Just adds a bit more dimension to the clap, just adds a bit more space. So let's move on to what I was talking about here. So if you guys have seen electro drums, a lot of times it's not right on the dot. And uh, they usually refer to it as a uh, pre-snare or pre-delayed. And in that way it comes right after the beat or sometimes before the beat. So what I did was I took a, uh, a sample. So this sample right here. The sample is being sidechained by the clap. So it plays it, but you don't hear this part. You don't hear this. Instead, you hear this. The way that I did that, I have a tutorial where I explain um, like how to do the Headhunters effect, how to route sidechaining via FabFilter Pro C. What's going on, if we open up FabFilter Pro C, we can see it in effect. So you can see that 
the pre-clap clap plays, and then when my clap that I'm using in my drums comes on, you know, silence it. So that way, if you guys are struggling to make pre-claps or make like a snare that's a bit more spacious and uh, more dynamic, you can do something like that. Throw in some sort of pre-clap or, or reverse a snare and introduce it, but let your snare or clap side chain that so just to reiterate again we got the clap the side chain so you can see down here it's being routed to it so what i did was i right click and side chain to this track i did some eqing to that uh pre-clap because if we turn it off it'll sound like this it sounds good because it's stacking it but that's not what i wanted i wanted the pre-clap to go away and just make space for the clap so that's why we have that there And again, if we turn it off, adds a lot more movement, can make your stuff more funkier, more swing. And uh, let's move on to the loop. The loop is just a loop, nothing crazy. Sometimes loops are golden, guys. Sometimes you just gotta keep going through loops and then it'll be like, oh shit, that loop is amazing. So sample selection is key. Nikki Romero said that you know, one thing that gets really underlooked is just choosing good samples. You got to look at good samples. It can be really a tedious task sometimes. And that's why when it comes to certain drums and samples, you know, I try and get in the habit of going to certain libraries that uh, I know are good for me or I want to like, uh, like how Mr. Belt and Weasel, they create their own library. That also is a good suggestion, taking the sounds that you know sound great and creating an archive, but whatever works for you. There was nothing much going on here. And uh, if you notice, I have a lot of fruity balance on these channels. It's because I'm using fruity balance for my side chain, which is not something I normally do, but I was doing it in the past. And uh, Dyro also does this. And we can see this in effect here. These curves here are for the fruity balance for the bass. And um, but they're also being routed to other instances that are sharing the same sidechain um, curve. Just be careful with the uh, fruity balance because if you forget to put like an automation clip before the beat drops, it might cut right into the transient right away. And if you don't want that, you want to put a copy of it before so that when it comes in, it'll be smooth. It's hard to explain that. You'll know when you guys start using Fruity Balance more in your projects to just put it before it as well. You can see that I did that here too, right before the drop, so that the bass doesn't just cut in. The bass is introduced smoothly. So just taking that the end of the curve and letting it start from zero. Let's talk about the rest of my automation clips. So I'm not doing anything with the tempo. I was going to automate the tempo, but I figured no. So nothing going on there. These automations are generally for my bass and we'll talk about the bass shortly. And then everything else is kind of just grouped. We have the crash, we have the, the loops, we have the, uh, there's the claps of course. Um, we have some stabs that we're using here. I believe they're heavily, heavily EQ'd. Let's turn off those effects. So it's very dark. So we have passive EQ. You can see I wanted to add a lot of uh, pump, a lot of brightness, and uh, a bit more trail to the brass shot, which is what we have there. Brass shots and impact shots can give you a lot of impact when your bass drops, when the drop comes. So let's come back to the original and let's play back a bit of this. So in the intro, there's actually not much going on. I just have chops of the vocal. Um, I was shuffling around the vocal and I was finding like different things at work. It was like, e, uh, e, uh, e, uh. there's sometimes it's good to chop up different vowels or words that are said or different notes because I'll explain in a moment why that was really important when I wanted to make a rising effect. So let's just listen to the vocal. also being side chained 
And this is the original track, um, just an MP3 form. Yeah, so I was doing a combination. I did the original song with the acapella as well. this evil back verb. I don't know why I call this evil back verb. Let's hear it. Mama told me not so I just introduced the original song. Let's, and um, I was just kind of pumping it a bit more with these. It wasn't doing anything too crazy. Sausage fattener. And I reduced some of the gain in sausage fattener. Sound goodizer again, just a tiny bit. Tiny bit of reverb, but I think I'm using the reverb for effect purposes, which is automated later in the project. And Fab Filter Simplon, I believe, is being used to high pass right before the drop to uh, create more of an impact when the drop hits. Now, let's listen to just, you know, the, the Migo stuff. Mama told me not to sell work. Mama, 17, five, same color t shirt. White. Mama told me not to sell work. Mama, 17, five, same color t shirt. Yeah. So here I did two really cool things. There was a part he was like, hey, hey. And um, I took that and I just did make unique like this, make unique a sample. We have this and I was messing around with the panning and uh, what I did was also there was a part where he spoke and he was singing in D sharp which is this there was a part where he says this and I believe he was singing in the correct harmonic key so then I took that and I did this Mama told me. So that was the reverb too that I was talking about. I believe this was being automated. I was automating the wetness of it. Like I said, this, that was where I was like, hmm, he's singing in D sharp. So I should somehow be creative with the vocal. That's why I kind of shuffled it around and I didn't make him start here. It was different. You know, generally speaking, the riser would have started right on the beat, but he spoke and then it started. D -shirt. Yeah. And that was only possible by doing a smart fade out, a little fade in of this sample to transition into it. And uh, these were being just pitch modulated using the pitch modulation here, going up one full octave. And this in the background helped to create a nice, you know, rising effect. So let's hear that again. Yeah. see everything comes together very well let's solo for you guys some of these individual things so you can see individual components and how they add to everything so let's start with the build-up snare not too much going on there again I got the equality it's probably gonna be high passing and boosting yep high pass and some high shelf we have the uh, supercharger here I have it on the slam preset just wanted to wreck the snare and just make it really fat and juicy. And um, let's introduce the build up clap. The build up clap, I believe, was already wet. I already had like a nice little trail to it. So I was just boosting some of the highs. Passive EQ supercharger. We have the sub riser. So the sub riser was created in Native Instruments Massive. We are modulating a few things. Let's listen to the sub riser with these. Sub riser is doing some really unique stuff. Let's show you what it is doing. Sub, sub riser, sab, sab riser. So the sub riser, uh, I started with just like a sub preset I had, just a basic sine wave. 
and then I was modulating and you can see modulator one, two, and three, they modulate the noise, they start to add more noise, starts modulating the wavetable position, um, starts increasing the high pass because we don't want a huge subby bass right before the drop, it's gonna take away from the impact. That's why you see these in action. You guys can try the other things too. I have a tutorial on how to make a sub riser and uh, it's those type of methods I use to uh, create this effect. And I generally kind of create some motion in the sound, high pass the sound. Sometimes I also modulate the reverb. So that would have been my kind of next go-to, but in this case I didn't. And the important thing here was the LFO. You're gonna wanna play around with the LFO and the key is not to use the sync. Don't use the sync. Because if you do sync, it's just gonna sound, it's gonna sound terrible. You want it to be smooth. You want it to start from nothing and then eventually kind of, you know, it's becoming some gar garbled up LFO and then returns back. So it creates a really smooth motion if you do it without sync. So leave sync off if you're doing a, a sub riser like that. Last but not least, we have the bass and the bass is being reintroduced, but with a filter on it, pretty substantial low pass and high pass to really tease it, we're teasing the bass. Mama told me. There are some other things as well, let's unmute them. There's nothing crazy with the ARP. The ARP was a preset I was using and I just EQ'd it, added some reverb. Yeah, so that pretty much covers it for the buildup. The buildup didn't have so much going on. It's a pretty basic buildup, but I was happy with it. Now when we move on to the drop, the components of the drop are very similar. You know, we got our drums there. We have some automations with Massive. A few things going on, nothing too crazy. Massive doesn't have much going on, you know, other than like a low pass filter. We can see that in action here when the vocal comes. So let's play this back. Again, pretty basic. We have our uh, claps going on. We have the pre-clap, same thing. We have rides being introduced. We can listen to the ride. It's very like, nothing crazy. You see the EQ is not doing much. It's just doing tiny bit of boosting on it. Just cleaning it up. And again, we can solo the bass if you guys wanna hear the bass. Very similar process. We have the passive EQ, the supercharger, Saturn, I believe, just giving some uh, tube warmth, sound goodizer. So I have a kind of similar. Here I did something a bit uncommon. The night I was working on the sound, I was baked as fuck. And I was like, yo, let me slap on that Valhalla. Let me see how it sounds. And uh, it turned out actually pretty decent. Because if we turn off the reverb, Yeah, it's not something typically common and correct to do. But like I said, music is like 50% art, 50% science. So get creative with it, try new things. Let's turn off all the effects and turn them on individually. So we have the bass going on. We have the hit, of course, which I talked about, the stab. We have the same back verb. The back verbs I created in Valhalla Vintage Verb and recorded them in Edison. And if you guys want to see how to create the same type of back verb, just uh, check out my video on back verb. It's on my channel. Also the noise. I have a video on the noise. I'm using the same type of noise. So right here. I even have Soundgodizer on the noise. 
I was just fucking lazy with that one. I was just like, slap on Sound Godizer, slap on some reverb, call it a day. However, it was being EQ'd in the synthesizer itself. So not that it was full of low frequency. It's definitely not much going on there. Do make sure that you high pass your white noise. If you don't do it in the synth itself, maybe consider doing it anywhere from 300 to 1000 and be gentle with your curve, maybe 24 or 18 or 12 dB. I usually use 24 dB on a lot of a lot of the stuff I do. And I kept using the noise, so the noise really doesn't even stop. You can see the noise never stops throughout the entire track because I felt that even when it low passed completely, it added this tiny little noise floor, which was kind of gluing things together, almost like an analog warmth, almost like an analog noise. So you can see that it's tiny, like it's hitting, I don't know, minus 80 dB, you know, minus 60 dB, 70, 80 dB. And I also use that noise as a, a riser. So alongside the, uh, these other generic effects, it was also being introduced. So you can see that we were automating the low pass, we were automating the width, and we were also introducing some sidechain right on the drop. So that gives you an idea of the automations for the noise. Here we have the effects, so some basic stuff from like the cashmere pack, um, basic impacts, nothing too crazy. This project actually isn't too heavy on effects. I did layer a break lead, like a little lead on top of the Migos track. I just felt like it added like a little dimension to this song. Like I felt like it would just kind of add some evil kind of gloominess to it. And uh, let's hear it without it. Mama told me not to sell word. Mama 17. Mama told me not to sell word. And I was just following the same notes of the track. I was just referencing it. I was experimenting with a lot of stuff. You know, there are a lot of times where I create so many patterns, pattern, you know, clone this, clone that make unique and I'm you know into the second the third the fourth but you know that's how it goes you know dead mouse said something great you know he's like a lot of times I'm working on sounds and I don't get that breakthrough moment until like 5 a.m. so it's not like uh, these melodies come to me right then and there sometimes they do sometimes they take a lot of experimenting shuffling around moving up and down so experimentation and Consistency is key. Um, I had two different build up snares. Okay, so I had two different patterns. Let's show you the patterns so you guys get an idea of what I what I did. These are all drawn manually. I really like doing this lately. I do a lot of pitch modulation on the snares, whether it be up a full octave, whether it be down. In this case, it was cool going down. It was getting like crushed. So try that out. Uh, the crash, so nothing was on the crash. The crash sounded great. I just added a passive EQ. Let's hear that. Yeah, it wasn't doing too much. And um, we reused the same drop and the same uh, break because it was effective. I liked it and it was like just straight to the point. So this is where the bass gets a, a low pass filter introduced. And the reason why we did that, of course, is to make space for the vocal. You always want to make space for the vocal. It doesn't have to be low pass. You can, you know, intelligently EQ it. You can compress it. You could even use techniques like side chaining it dynamically, but um, that probably wouldn't be a good idea for your bass because it would just be going up and down in levels. Something like this, an EQ or a filter is better suited for it, and that's what I did. What's being introduced is some modulation. So let's show you that. So you can see this is like the sixth version of the bass patch I was working for this track. 
we have macro seven and eight jumping up adding some some fm and number seven i believe is modulating I'm not sure what it's modulating something something's being modulated yeah nonetheless something's being modulated um not in pitch but in terms of like wavetable position i do that a lot you'll see that in like my electro saiyans 2 video breakdown uh, we have the closed hats closed hats i love doing closed hats lately i think who got me into closed hats more were people like of course the trap scene but of course um tony jr with his track immortal with dubs he's doing a lot of quick hats a lot of like triplets which is more uncommon so those are the closed hats we did a similar thing with the vocal here you know we took the vocal made a nice little chop those type of effects they remind me of data life we have some panning going on. We're just automating the panning and then down one full octave and then again going up the same method that we did here. Mama told me. I'm not sure what this loop is. Let's double check to make sure I'm using this. Yep. So that was the ARP that was used in the, basically from the break all the way to the buildup. And like I said, it's just a preset just to add some melodic, melodic mixture. All right. So that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. I'll show you guys again, um, my, um, tracks, the bass we showed, of course, the sub riser, we have a pad, nothing crazy going on. And the pad is playing consistently and then rising up in pitch. That was just a Nexus preset, nothing crazy going on there. And then I just grouped my effects. This project all in all was probably about 20 to 25 individual stems, very basic. What I did afterwards was I rendered, um, I think my mix down or my individual stems and did a project for mastering. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, guys, if I skip something, anything you guys have a question about, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'm going to be doing breakdowns of my other tracks as well. So you guys can see visually, you know, what I'm doing, what my process is. Remember to drop a like, share this video if you found it helpful, if you found it useful. And uh, can't wait to get more videos out for you guys. I will see you guys soon. I got to go run, fasted run, go make some gains and enjoy some breakfast. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. <laughs>